Dear chess friends, welcome again to my YouTube channel. In two recent days, I have been getting a lot of inquiries and requests about my opinion related to the second game of World Championship match between Magnus Carlsen and Jan Nepomyshi. Not surprising because it was actually the opening where I have a lot of expertise uh, in many cases, this opening even associated with my name, uh, mainly because uh, of my well-known and well-received books, first D4 Grandmaster Repertoire, where I covered Catalan as cornstone of white repertoire. Now, it's, it goes without saying that so far we have three draws, but game number two was the most fascinating game in this match. Now, it was very unusual line for many of you, I guess, and... Uh, I would like to share my opinions and to show you how the theory of this line evolved since my first edition, which was released in 2008. It's really a remarkable, remarkable journey. Now, let's go, uh, le let's go to the game and to the variation itself. So Magnus started D4. By the way, interesting fact that I would like to mention, uh, there was a Twitter post by Vishwanathan Anand where he... Uh, he, he wanted to do some kind of poll which move Magnus will play with White, which, which move will he will start his game. And he said like, well, in his opinion, it's either C4 or Knight F3. And uh, I responded, it will be first D4. I even suspected that it might be potentially Catalan, but I just, uh, I just responded with first D4 move. So I was right from this perspective. Now, uh, d4, knight f6, c4, e6, no surprise here, it's a very popular, very popular opening, uh, very reliable, obviously in this position there is a choice, uh, white can play knight c3, which would allow probably Nimzo, white can go right away g3, like go into, into the Catalan right away, but Magnus preferred first knight f3, this is not my move for order, I usually start with g3, but definitely Magnus has his own preferences, has his own opinions, and so on. So now, of course, uh, Black can uh, respond also with b6 in this position, which will uh, transpose into Queen's, Queen's Indian, a very solid opening, but uh, Jan uh, played d5. And only now, uh, Magnus opted for Catalan. Another move, knight c3, which will give black a white choice of different options there could be queen's game to decline bishop e7 there could be uh semi slav with c6 so we of course we don't know what jan would play uh, vienna variation stands pretty well now according to the current theory dc4 there is bishop before uh ragozin variation another good line and finally there is even a semi tarash which is uh doing pretty well as well uh recently cd5 knight d5 also played quite often at the highest level. So we don't know here and kind of like not surprising that in this position G3 played by Magnus. So at least this is one opening. Of course, uh, there are like uh, many choices here for black, uh, but at least it's one opening. So after G3, <clears throat> Jan responded with Bishop E7. So it's interesting. It's considered to be a main line and the most reliable line for black, maybe together with the, another idea, which is bishop before check, bishop d2, bishop e7. So in my personal opinion, I, I would say those two are the main lines at the highest level, the most reliable lines for black, uh, the most solid lines. Of course, uh, of course, there is a move uh, d takes c4, which usually leads to more, uh, more challenging play. So it's more double-edged, uh, like in some way, I would say more principle, but not really, not really. I, I think like bishop e7 and bishop e4 are very, very serious moves. Now, after bishop e7, uh, bishop g2, castle, castle, and d takes e4. So that's a main, definitely without, uh, without any doubts, this is the main tabia at the highest level. Like if you, uh, if you check the elite grandmaster games in this position you see dc4 uh in most of the games of course there is a so-called close catalan where black let's say plays c6 or another move order 97 so this is considered to be close catalan where c6 b6 bishop b7 these kind of ideas but definitely definitely 
DC4 is uh, the most popular move by far. Now, in this position, uh, white has a choice. White has a choice. Uh, Magnus played queen c2 without any doubts the, the, most, uh, the most popular move. Now, uh, there is another similar idea uh, to attack c4 pawn is to play queen a4 in this position. Uh, what it will give, actually, we will see. So, first of all, it, it would actually uh, not allow the line that happened in the game with b5 but on the other hand uh, black most probably will respond with a6 queen c4 b5 queen c2 and bishop b7 and that's only the beginning of the theory this is the position which i actually covered and recommended here uh the variation with bishop d2 in my first edition which was published in 2008 uh so this line was back then very popular. Uh, Vladimir Kramnik played this a lot, Boris Gelfand. Now the theory has evolved and I got the feeling that this line is like very well, uh, very well played by Black recently. So Black developed a lot of, uh, like a couple of serious lines where I think uh, the re objectively speaking, there is no advantage. There is no advantage and very hard to fight for advantage. Now, um, queen, as I mentioned, queen c2 was played by Magnus. We also, I would like to uh, highlight also another uh, another popular move. It's probably choice number uh, n number three, I would say. Uh, it's knight a5, uh, attacking the pawn c4, and now it's very important that uh, black has a very strong reaction here, knight c6. There is a theory, there are lines, so it's sacrificing pawn back. Uh, but uh, this, this allows to, to develop pieces rapidly for black. So this line, as far as I know, uh, doing pretty well for black as well. So queen c2, it's kind of uh, the most challenging line nowadays, I would say, in this position. So now, uh, b5. Uh, b5 was played by Jan. Uh, is it surprising choice? Uh, not so much, not so much. It's all not nowadays well uh well established line but before we switch to this line i would like to mention that uh, the main move in this position a6 and then uh the difference the difference with the line that i just mentioned before queen a4 that in this position white can play a4 and this is actually my recommendation in my second editions book uh where, where i also cover catalan for white uh, if I'm not mistaken, it, it, the book was published 2016. It's uh, it's already it's been five years, so a lot of theory here has developed. Uh, now uh, the main the main line uh, here goes bishop d7, queen c4, bishop c6. So this is like the the most uh, playable position nowadays uh, among grandmasters. Now instead of a4. Obviously, the, the alternative is queen c4, but this line we covered through queen a4, then b5, queen c2, bishop b7, and, uh, well, as I mentioned before, bishop d2, it's, in my opinion, at least the most principal move here, bishop d2. So here we have this position, and uh, Magnus, I believe, I believe he, he would play a4 in this position if a6 would happen in the game, but it didn't happen. And Jan responded with the move b5. Now it's very interesting how, uh, if I remember correctly, like in my first edition, basically I I didn't take this move seriously at all. Now uh, recommended in this position a4. By the way, by the way, uh, Magnus played knight a5, and we'll try to get into like uh, the reasons why it's happened. Uh, a little bit surprising still in my view, but, but you know, those guys are far, far ahead in their theoretical knowledge. I, I mean, they definitely worked on this line before the match, their teams worked, uh, their computers worked. Uh, yeah, so it's, uh, so that's his decision to play 95, right? So I believe uh, he wasn't satisfied with what is happening after A4 and uh, analyzed 95, which is, I find, remarkable. Now, uh, it's definitely, it's still uh, by, by big margin, I believe, like A4 is a top choice in this position. First of all, uh, there is a well, 
non-Catalan trap here. If white, if black plays c6, defending the pawn, a b5, c b5, the problem it runs into this tactical trick, knight g5, and especially knight goes here because we need to prevent knight d5. So now knight d5 runs into queen h7 mate. Uh, therefore, in this position, basically what is happening, black is losing exchange. There is no way to cover the big diagonal and the Catalan bishop will take on eight. Now, for instance, after h6, I, I just wanted to mention one uh, small detail here. Instead of bishop a8, I would probably suggest to take this pawn. So it's, we, anyway, we give up the knight, but it's better to give up the knight here and white is clearly better, almost winning. So this is a well-known uh, th this is a well-known trap. Obviously, grandmasters are aware of this. And now, already in my second edition, there have been some games where black started to play before in this position. Started to play before in this position. Uh, obviously, avoided like uh, bad mistakes c6. Before, it seemed uh, quite interesting. One of the key ideas was here to meet knight e5 with exchange sacrifice queen d4 bishop takes a8 queen a5 seems like black is doing pretty well here in this position um there have been a recent game uh, boris gelfan for some reason played this and he lost with white uh, against nihal sarin uh, this game from uh, summer 2021 so i guess um black uh, well my, my impression was that black is doing well and uh, black is still doing well now, instead of uh, playing knight e5, I recommended move knight d2, and I think uh, it was well accepted by also like many grandmasters. There were amazing game uh, that I quite often uh, show my students, uh, Grishuk against Nakamura, where Alexander executed like like basically the strategy recommended in my book and won a brilliant positional game against Nikaru. Uh, now, uh, the line was actually c6, and now it, we, we actually capture with the knight on c4, not with the queen, because queen will uh, get under attack with bishop a6. So that's basically pawn sacrifice. Black has to accept pawn sacrifice because otherwise the position uh, of their pieces on the queen side is pretty, pretty miserable. So the only idea is to take this pawn, and now rook d1, one tempo, queen has to move to c5. I think it's the best square. Bishop e3, another tempo, queen h5, knight bd2. And as it's quite often happens in Catalan, we have a very nice playable compensation. I, I would always prefer white in this type of position. Obviously, the compensation is due to uh, better piece coordination. We already developed all our minor pieces. And obviously, queen side, problematic queen side, which is undeveloped and it's always the problem with the bishop on c8 it's very hard so much easier much easier to play uh, for white in this position although like there are some games and and some strong players trying to improve on the game that i mentioned before uh Grishuk against nakamura but it's definitely not the most pleasant position for for black so instead of playing c6 recently in two recent years i would say uh move knight d5 gain a lot of traction a lot of popularity actually this move i covered in my second edition now by the way we have even the game of magnus playing with black and i think it's actually always started from magnus game so what happened here after knight d5 knight c4 it seems like white has a very stable positional advantage but uh, there is a very concrete approach here c5 attacking the center, uh, we have to take dc5. And now I think I only analyzed uh, in this position, bishop takes uh, bishop takes c5 and what then uh, white comfortably better. I recommended back then novelty e4 and it's very nice, very nice Catalan advantage here. Knight on c4 is very strong. Black still has issues with queenside development. Now the whole point is bishop a6 move. Bishop a6 move. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Magnus was the first one who played this move. And now we have already uh, several games in this variation uh, by strong players, by the way. Bishop a6. Uh, so uh, black is looking for quick development here. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if with some normal move, like instead of capturing bishop c5, 
the next move for black will be knight c6 very quick development like rook c8 uh now the best move for white in this position knight e3 uh attacking d5 knight <clears throat> and uh, tr uh obviously preparing rook d5 rook d1 so it's uh and at the same time protecting pawn on c5 so queen now controls the pawn so black sacrifices basically everything here just quick development uh knight d7 and now the theoretical line here runs knight takes d5 e takes d5 uh, pawn bishop d5 i i i don't recall anyone capture bishop d5 i guess um i guess here after bishop d5 i forgot to check this line theoretically but it's just nobody played and uh, in my opinion it my opinion it might be rook c8 it just might be rook c8 and black pieces suddenly are very active capture on c5 uh coming obviously the queen is misplaced on c2 so it's probably very very active position for black and absolutely full compensation absolutely full compensation here so instead of uh capturing the second pawn c6 is the key move here the principal move now uh no time to move the knight rook c8 a very natural uh, response uh, now uh, now now again bishop d5 nobody captures bishop d5 um it's even like i i'm trying to guess what will be the move L let's put it this way probably i i would guess it's something probably knight e5 uh, well o obviously if you check this position especially with the agent he will give you an instant answer what is the best square for the knight so basically uh, basically getting this c6 pawn i mean whether like we we need so the, the bishop is hanging maybe we'll need queen b6 or capturing knight c6 and it's it's a fantastic position for black very active so therefore white is playing in this position bishop f4 so the idea to have c7 move available c7 move available in the future now uh, knight c5 uh, rook d1 so that's uh, the main theory here d4 so this is how the game develops uh, here in this position and uh, uh, we have here but but by the way i'm i'm thinking how how magnus game continued here i think it was probably move c7 yeah well exactly c7 so there was a high level game played in 2019 he played against dean cluren who i respect tremendously in the openings but it seems like magnus knowledge was uh was better in this game specifically although uh it seems like a couple of moves like were played really well by by dean clearance c7 queen d7 knight d2 knight d2 g5 very nice move so it's very important to deflect this bishop and get c7 pawn bishop e5 f6 bishop d4 and rook c7 and i would highly recommend everyone to check this game it was a brilliant brilliant end game technique by magnus in this game and uh, he won against uh, player number two or number three in the world with black it was uh, it was a remarkable remarkable game uh, so th this line was pretty good and and that's the reason why after knight c5 white switched to the move rook d1 uh, i remember boris gelfand game uh, where uh, he he won uh, also a very nice game with white uh, in this position so again pawn d5 is hanging uh, it's important to protect this pawn d4 very logical and now guys this is the this is the theory this is like the modern theory h4 this is like the top choice of computer the reason for that to prevent g5 which can happen for instance after knight d2 i think uh, black is just winning here the 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 bishop uh, bishop e5 and let's say f6 so that's the reason so just there is a time to play this move h4 and uh, the game that i mentioned by boris gelfand actually featured rook e8 now uh, we have some problems with development here and uh, with for instance knight on b1 is kind of like uh, problematic and therefore knight d2 like no time to protect pawn e2 rather we need to play this right way bishop e2 uh, so black regains the pawn c7 queen d7 rook dc1 and this position appear to be uh appear to be much better for white uh, that means the pawn on c7 is too powerful the pawn on c7 is too powerful now uh what i noticed instead of move rook e8 uh the i would say last word in this variation is move h6 here uh we have a game uh played in riga 
uh, Grand Suisse just recently, a month ago, or maybe a little bit more, uh, where uh, between Magal Sudu, strong Iranian player over 2700, against Indian prodigy Gukesh. So those guys working very hard in the openings, I can promise you guys. So the game uh, continued Bishop a3, Rook e8, and uh, Knight d2. Knight d2. Well, actually, actually, I, I think I, I, I'm wrong here. I thought this is the best way. So there were some other games here. This is the best way for white to handle h6. In my opinion, uh, there, there were actually two wins from this position for white. But for some reason, uh, the grandmaster from Iran, he actually played c7 in this position. And after queen d7, knight d2, bishop e2, rook c1, knight d3, it was much better version. It was much better version. And uh, actually, black, in my opinion, were even better at some point. So th this position is pretty good. So I think like uh, the, the the insertion... So Bo Boris Gelfand actually had a similar position, I would say. But I, I think probably if, if we get here back to Boris Gelfand game, so we have uh, the same position actually, right? It's It's... It's actually, is it, is it the same position, right? So, like, you, you see, guys, I got a little bit confused, but it's it's move rook e8, so not, uh, not really the same position, right? It's, oh, there is no rook, of course. There is no rook on e8, so, of course, in this position, Boris Gelfand, what happened in Boris Gelfand game, so I got confused a little bit, it just seemed exactly the same. In, in Boris Gelfand game, uh, there is a rook on e8, so he played bishop c6 here. And, uh, and then I think it's appeared to be win for white, if I'm not mistaken. So the difference with the Gukesh game that uh, there is no bishop c6. I mean, there is a move bishop c6, but rook is not hanging on the eight, and it's probably pretty pointless. Uh, so that's a development in this line. Uh, remarkable, uh, remarkable how, how all has been changed uh, throughout the years here. Uh, now... Probably Magnus, what, what I can say, but, well, fir first of all, very important detail. I I kind of like believe that this line promised White some advantage. It seems to me that there is a lot of room for improvement. Uh, computer kind of like prefers White, not by much. But there is a, a even more remarkable idea, which has been played recently by some Russian grandmasters. Uh, it's not that they started, they were before correspondence game, but you know, guys, it's always... People pay attention when some high-level elite grandmasters implement ideas in their games. So here, for instance, I noticed the game of Alexander Grishuk, where he played bishop b7. Shocking. Shocking. Just sacrificing pawn ab5, with the good chances that the second pawn is falling as well. Pawn on c4. Now a6. a6, may maybe in some way it resembles... The Enco Gambit, but not really, right? But it's it's kind of like similar moves. We, we capture b5, a6, but of course it's very, very different. Now b6 probably critical. Now knight c3, uh, there, there was a game, I think, Gelfand against Fedor save, where uh, after ab5, rook a8, bishop a8, knight takes b5, uh, black just protected uh, the pawn on c4. And it seems, even though it looks, it looks pretty vulnerable, we'll see in general the concept. So probably it's even better version for black than the main line. Now the main line runs b takes a6, knight takes a6, queen c4. So white, white is pawn up. It looks like a healthy pawn up, but this is modern chess, guys. Now, uh, obviously, bishop d5 comes, one tempo on the queen. Um, not easy to find a very convenient square for white queen. So queen d3. Queen c3 would run into knight e4, I guess. Knight b4, rook takes a8, queen takes a8, queen d1. And now uh, there are actually already, there are like several games here. Uh, the game uh, that I think like the model game, and I think like probably objectively speaking, the best idea for black is uh, move knight a2, played by, uh, first by Alexander Grushuk, in my opinion. I might be wrong, maybe some correspondence game, but at least this is when uh, I saw for the first time. And there is another approach, c5, let's say knight c3, bishop c6, d c5, bishop c5. Seems like a healthy extra pawn, because you don't see, like, we don't see how in the nearest future black will regain b2 pawn, but it's all about activity of minor pieces, 
rook d8 is coming, queen is definitely will get under attack, and it's appeared to be so. It's positional long term compensation, which quite possibly is sufficient. It's very, very hard to say, but I think 92 is even, even a better version, even a better version. So, remarkable move. Uh, I guess attacking the knight here, probably also rook b8 might come. Knight c3 is very logical and even more remarkable, knight takes c3. So improving in some way white pawn structure, that was b2 pawn was somewhat a target. Now take capture, capture and h6. So this position uh, has been played already in two games, uh, two grandmaster games, two like really strong grandmasters played, like four strong grandmasters played this position. So one game featured bishop f4, uh, and uh, it was game Grishuk against Berkesh, c5, and uh, that, that seems like absolutely full compensation here. This pawn is too weak, kind of like not surprising. Uh, Berkesh, Hungarian grandmaster, he just gave up the pawn right away. Bishop c4 and knight f5, and it was a quick draw here in this game. And now uh, another try in this position was uh, knight e1 played in a Russian championship, also very recent tournament, 2021, uh, Chigaev against Yesipenko. Uh, we, we probably, we all know who is Yesipenko, who gave a very, very difficult time to Magnus in quarterfinals of World Cup. Uh, knight e1, and then there was c5, Queen d3, c4, queen c2, and knight e4. There was a little bit different type of compensation. And again, guys, if you check this, uh, it's everywhere seems black. Black is doing pretty well. Black is doing pretty well. So uh, it's it's an interesting question. It's an interesting question. If a4 would be played, would Jan go for b4 line or bishop b7? We don't know. My guess would be bishop b7. Especially, I I think potentially. We might see, you know, how it's happening in the World Championship. Like, they, they start playing one line and then there are, like, more games coming in the same line. I really doubt it will happen again. I would give, like, maybe 20% that it, this this line, B5, will happen. Or, like, Catalan with DC4. A little bit hard to believe. Like, 20-30% I will give. And it's interesting to know which position Jan analyzed. Uh, everyone is talking about some supercomputer that he used for the preparation. Uh, my guess would be bishop b7. I don't know. That's just my guess. Now, uh, let's talk about the game. Knight a5, relatively rare move, but there have been some games. Uh, now, obviously, playing for compensation here. Um, Jan uh, responded in the game with c6. I, I wanted also to mention uh, other moves. First of all, queen d4. Very interesting story here about this move. Queen d4, it's... Uh, well known in this type of position, so there is like a similar sacrifice with the pawn on b6. Uh, well known exchange sacrifice in, in, in this Catalan lines. I mean, I'm talking about main line here with the idea that after bishop a8, queen a5 is captured. It's actually two pawns, two pawns for the exchange. And I think it's a great position for black here. Not surprising, black scored 78%, almost 78% in this position. So it's probably also easier to handle this position uh, for black in on practice. Now, what is interesting that what Magnus prepared here after queen d4, it's very easy to guess. Knight takes f7. Nobody have ever played this move, but it's just like very clearly, very clear and obvious improvement over bishop a8. Now, yes, we are not getting exchange because black is not obliged to take rook f7, bishop a8, which is goes without saying that it's much better version. We we got extra pawn and ruin black pawn structure on the king side. Uh, now, uh, after knight f7, black probably will respond with c6, and now we'll have Catalan long-term compensation for, for the pawn. I think it looks great. It looks great, uh, like queen is misplaced, the pawn structure is problematic here. I, I think it's a very promising position for white. So here you get like a new idea, knight takes f7. Knight takes f7. Now, that must move queen d4. Now, a very interesting alternative, in my opinion, knight d5. So here it's not uh, uh, not, not exactly clear uh, what is happening in this position. Uh, I would like to mention just one game. Uh, well, but definitely both players analyze this position. They have their own opinions. I would like to mention one game between very strong players, uh, Adli, uh, 
Grandmaster from Egypt against Matlakov, also 2021, very fresh, played in Grand Suisse, Riga, 20, uh, like two months ago, one month ago, uh, Bishop B7. So B3, what is B3 move? It's just like thematic Catalan compensation. Uh, I'm even not sure how White is planning to recapture, but regardless, there will be quite nice compensation here. So probably AB3 feels like AB3 and just uh, just playing uh, Rook D1, maybe one day uh, Rook D1, one day E4 and so on. So that's, there are many, many variations where this type of sacrifice occurs in the, in Catalan. So that's obvious, but uh, Russian Grandmaster reacted Bishop B7 here. He, uh, he even didn't capture on B3. So it appears that after BC4, Knight B4, Queen C3, let's say capture, capture on C5, Black is doing incredibly well, uh, probably slightly better. Now, after Bishop D2, what was played in the game, uh, Russian Grandmaster played C5 and got really good game, probably even was, I would say, better out of the opening. So all these developments uh, and is just, you know, the theory that you can access with the like chess-based tools and so on. So like, um, so it's easy to research once again, I want to emphasize that without any doubts, both players knew 10 times more about this variation that we covered in this video. They are far, far ahead in the theory. Now, Jan played c6 at this position. Now, an obvious idea, also very common idea actually in Catalan. So sacrificing pawn back, but the point is that after knight c6, bishop c6, rook b8, black is doing extremely well, probably black is better. So there was one game. Uh, in this position. Now it's it's equal, uh, regain, but white regained the pawn, but the price is too high. Pawn on c4 is very nice, gives a lot of space, gives a lot of space to black. Um, yeah, so no no problems whatsoever for black. Now, not surprising that Magnus played a4 in this position. a4, uh, again, it's uh, pretty thematic, so there is a threat ab5 and knight c6, also the threat, obviously, right now, uh, knight d5. It's, I think it's just literally the only move in this position. Um, now, knight c3 was played. Uh, knight c3 was played in this position. Uh, there was, uh, I noticed some people on Facebook, I noticed some polls where they recommended a takes b5, cb5, and to play knight c3, to play knight c3 in this position. Obviously, pressure against d5 and b5. But there are... Uh, there are two games where black responded with f6, knight g4, interesting square for the knight, uh, just trying not to block the bishop, preserving the pressure on the diagonal, queen d7, protecting b5, and it seems, it seems like black is doing great here, black is doing great, I mean, I don't see any chance for advantage here. Now, therefore, again, I'm pretty sure uh, Magnus is aware of all these theoretical developments, so he played knight c3, f6, now this time knight f3, I guess there is no point here with knight g4, and specifically for this position, Jan implemented uh, a new move here, queen d7, so it's, for this specific position, it's a novelty. Now, b4 has been played, so let, let's say we're talking about this position, b4 has been played uh, twice, I think, uh, and uh, one game, white reacted with knight b1, which is not correct, obviously, knight e4, uh, controlling c5 square, definitely the move to play. Uh, bishop a6. And now uh, this game uh, featured actually knight takes c5, the, the one that I mentioned, featured knight takes knight c5. Uh, by the way, when uh, when I put this position, so as I mentioned, there were two games where b4 was played. Uh, and it's interesting that suddenly eight new games popped up. And then uh, I felt like, what is the line where this uh, the, the the same position can happen? And actually, I uh, I researched this and I discovered that there is the majority of the games where uh, white uh, well this position occurred actually happened through this move forward d4 d5 c4 c6 uh, let's say knight f3 or knight c3 doesn't matter or e6 and g3. So it's kind of like, well, it's a slav, it's a semi-slav, and then g3, and then dc4, bishop g2, b5. So everything was happening through this move order, actually, most of the games. And that's why at some point there, is on, there was only one game, and then it's happened that there are like more games in this position. 
Okay, so let's try uh, get back to to our move order. Uh, let, let's just go all the way with the Catalan move order, g3. So we have bishop e7, d c4, queen c2, b5, knight e5, c6, a4, knight e5, knight c3. Uh, and we are talking about f6, knight f3, and now discussing before move. Now, knight e4, bishop a6. What is interesting that uh, there have been many games, including I, I even found the game between elite players. Uh, it's many years ago. There were definitely elite players back then. Uh, Boris Gelfand against Shirov, bishop h3 was played in this game. Uh, and mo the majority of the game, so this is a top choice. Now, I, uh, I checked this line. It seems like black is doing incredibly well, probably even better. Knight g5, so e6 is hanging. Uh, b3 to insert, very important. Kick the queen on d1 and just bishop c8 protecting. Actually, Shirov played rook f6, which was not a good move. Bishop c8 is much better. And it lo looks like a messy position, but black, if you check the uh, engine evaluation, black is clearly better here, actually, like doing extremely, extremely well. Now, uh, what is the solution here? Uh, the solution is to play knight c5. And we have this kind of compensation. Uh, we are still pulling down, but now, uh, now white... Uh, obtained bishop pair advantage, obviously issues with still queenside development, knight on b8, uh, knight d4 somewhere, pawn on e6 is vulnerable. I think probably e5 was an inaccurate move and white uh, gained upper hand here after e4, b3, queen d2, knight c7, queen c3, knight e6, bishop e3. So white, uh, white uh, was clearly better in the game. So it's really really nice model game for this kind of pawn structure. Queen d7, novelty. Uh, they know everything. They know everything and their knowledge is extremely, extremely deep. Now, uh, e4, logical, uh, knight b4, queen e2. <clears throat> and now I know uh, almost everyone criticized move knight d3. Seems like some kind of inaccuracy, but not something major. I, I wouldn't say it's, it's like a big mistake or something, uh, probably bishop b7 is a better move in this position. And there we have, I would say, typical Catalan fight where white is pulled down, but uh, got very nice uh, pawns in the center. So bishop is a little bit misplaced here on, on b7. So for instance, this position, uh, it's just the position to analyze, to play. It's very interesting. <clears throat> Could be d5 break at some point. Could be just normal development, bishop e3, rook d1, and so on. So it's all uh, it's all very interesting. Uh, I'm very curious to see developments in this position. N maybe not in this match, but later in the games of uh, grandmasters and and other level uh, players. Now, uh, so knight d3 was played, and it seems like it was a great timing for this. Maybe slightly unusual, but uh, e5 move, which works really well. So creating, uh, I guess, the tr some tactical threat to take a b5, followed by uh, knight discovery, uh, bishop b7, <clears throat> e f6, all this logical, I think the best moves, bishop f6, knight goes to e4, and knight a6. Knight a6. Here, uh, probably uh, already, if you checked any source, like everyone knows, that seems like knight a5 was... Uh, definitely not the best move in this position. Uh, in this case, after bishop e5, d5, knight c5, black was objectively, objectively, in, in good position, probably maybe even, like, I would say better, but not so sure for, from practical point of view it's better. But uh, computer-wise, like, evaluation of engine, yes. Uh, now, uh, what uh, could be an improvement for white in this position? So there are actually two interesting ideas. One idea is very simple, get the bishop, gf6, uh, the best move, covering e5, bishop h6, rook f7, rook d1. And just, again, playing this position with long-term compensation. Another idea that I'm like a little bit more in favor of this idea, to play bishop e3, not to rush with knight f6, then most probably knight b4, and to play knight e5. To play knight e5, let's say bishop e5, d5, this type of compensation. So I think, obviously, the pawn is untouchable. I think, uh, I think th there is always bishop c5 idea. We can start with knight c5 and so on. Uh, 
knight on d3 is very strong, but we have bishop pair potential squares to uh, to jump with our knight. Bishop on b7 is not playing well, so that's the position uh, that uh, probably worth to, worth to try for white if this position happens in your game. Now, uh, I, I I posted like today on Facebook, uh, kind of like somewhat a joke, uh, and I said like, well, after three games, we can clearly state that first d4 move is much leads to much more entertaining chess than first e4. Uh, like two Rui Lopez games were like well very high level obviously but not very uh, entertaining games to watch but Catalan was amazing right it was a big fight unfortunately we still have uh, three draws in this match and we like everyone looking forward to see the first decisive game and once there will be first decisive game maybe we'll see much more fighting games and more decisive games because well the second uh, player will have to uh, to get back into the match and will take uh, much more risk. So so far uh, so far it's high quality, but uh, maybe like a little bit peaceful, I would say. Uh, maybe Magnus, as always, he uh, does not mind to get to the rapid chess. I don't know. I, I don't know whether this is his strategy. I think he openly admitted uh, when he played against Fabiano that he's like looking for. Um, for the tie break where he can play 20 25 minutes, but uh, Jan Neponish is pretty good uh, blitz and rapid player, so I'm not sure that's uh, uh, that's the strategy this time. Anyway, I think the topic was Catalan in this game. I gave you some ideas, uh, very, very interesting line, very interesting line, some fascinating developments, uh, even for me, for someone who really knows some stuff in Catalan. Uh, Hopefully you enjoyed this video, guys. Please like, subscribe. If you, uh, I would really encourage you to 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 leave the comments. I, it's quite possible that I miss something. Maybe you have a new ideas. You have a new ideas. We can discuss. I try to respond to every message. Uh, smash notification button so that you can see always. Uh, you can be notified when I upload a new video. And I'll see you soon. Thank you very much for your attention.